Welcome back to another exciting video. And what we're talking about today is how hard you should hit your guitar strings and how hard you should press your guitar strings. I was watching this guy play. This has been some time ago. And um, it's a friend of mine, actually. And I was watching him play guitar. Um, and when he plays the guitar, he squeezes the neck so hard that his fingers start turning white. And he hits it so hard. And I'm like, dude, chill. This isn't your girlfriend that you call cheating with your best friend's cousin. All right? This is your guitar. It didn't do anything wrong to you. Relax and don't abuse your guitar. So I got to thinking about this. I thought, man, I've been answering so many questions lately about people that are having fret buzz issues. And a lot of them, you know, we go back and forth and they're like, oh my God, you know, that, that worked or we found it or whatever have you. you know, as we go through, through the, um, our messages or through my email and then we fire things back and forth until we figure, finally figure out where the fret buzz problem is. Because everybody has fret buzz issues somewhere or something. But every once in a while, I get somebody that, you know, are the strings new? Yes. Is the neck set up correctly? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Is your action set up correctly? Yes. And, you know, is your bridge set up correctly? Yes. Is your nut good? Yes. Everything's good, but I still have fret buzz. Well, chances are, if everything's good and you still have fret buzz, then the only problem is you. Chances are, you are hitting your strings too damn hard. All right? This isn't your redheaded stepchild. You don't need to hit them that hard. Sometimes, a little softer accomplishes the same exact result, but better. So, and I tell them that, well, dude, what kind of pick are you using? Are you using a jazz pick? Are you using a heavy pick? You know, how hard are you hitting the strings? And a lot of times that's all it comes down to. If you're getting this excessive amount of fret buzz, you're just hitting damn strings too damn hard. So a couple of things we're going to talk about here. Well, hopefully quickly, but you know how I like to ramble on. So if you are playing on a clean channel, a clean guitar, and when you are doing, even on electric, sometimes, you know, there's parts we have to strum out all the time. And what you want to do is if you're picking up a lot of extra fret noise, and I'm getting a bit of fret buzz out of that. Now, depending on what you're playing, it could be, you know, it, it's all right. You're going to get fret buzz out of an electric guitar. If your guitar is not, if you have no fret buzz whatsoever on your guitar, then either you've got your action set up so high you cannot play it fast, or you're using an extremely light pick with a tremendous amount of flex, which is fine if that's how it works. If that's what you like, that is good. But for most of us, we like a guitar that plays relatively fast, so we have very low action. We have very low action. Everything is set correctly, but we're getting a tremendous amount of uh, fret buzz. Then we have to adjust this. This becomes the problem right here. So a couple of things we're going to go over real quick. Now, if we're playing clean, look at the difference here. Let me grab, I'm, I'm doing this, um, we'll talk about this at the end of this video. Stay tuned to the end of the video about the, uh, my, my further research on a pick comparison. This is going to go on for a while. This is the John Petrucci pick here. And this pick is very thick, has a very sharp point on it. Now what this does is this causes a tremendous amount of pick attack. And the more pick attack you have, the harder you're going to hit the string. So, to give you an idea, we're doing this on a clean channel. I'm going to strum this same passage with this pick, which is very heavy and very sharp. And listen. Now, I don't know how this is going to translate over to YouTube, but here I have a tremendous amount of fret buzz. So, what do we do? We have two options. We can either, well, actually, we have three options. We can either try to strum it much more lightly. Now, with a pick with this much, hard of a pick with this much of a point, that's not always the easiest thing to do.
Now that was actually quite a bit lighter on my side and I can still hear it here, the fret buzz. So what do we do? Well, we can go to a much lighter pick, something that has a tremendous amount of flex in it. And I gotta be honest, I don't know if I have anything that really, because most of my picks are very heavy, um, which obviously will compensate for the amount of attack that you're get, uh, getting. But the problem with that is when you start playing with a very light pick, sometimes it gets very hard to play fast accurately. And we don't want to be changing picks back and forth while we're playing. So the other thing we can do is we can actually go to a pick and it, it can be equally as heavy, but we can get rid of the pointy, the pointy tip part, the point that stabs you. We can get rid of this part. So I've got another pick here, uh, again, in my search for the ultimate guitar pick. Let's see here, right here. Now this pick is a little bit bigger than a jazz pick. It is very heavy, no flex, but it has a much more rounded tip. Listen to the difference. And I'm going to play it with the same amount of force that I played the first time. And the difference is absolutely stunning. And what's going on here is I'm not getting all that attack, which is causing me to beat the hell out of my guitar strings. So what's happening is if we take this John Petrucci or Jazz 3 or whatever have you, you take something with a very sharp point. And what it's doing is when it's hitting the string, it's actually popping off of the string. It can't roll off of it because the tip is so sharp. Now, because it's a very small tip, it moves across the surface extremely fast. And that's why people say it's much more, you're much more accurate. And it reveals all your flaws when you start playing with a, a good jazz pick. But it's literally popping off of the string. It has no choice but to pop off the string because there's so much attack from the tip being so sharp. But if we grab a regular pick, it has a much more rounded tip on it. Like the one I was just using here. A little bigger than a jazz pick, a little smaller than a full-size pick, but a much more rounded tip. So what's happening is now the string is literally rolling off of the pick. The, it's just moving in and rolling off the other side. And you don't have that snap, which causes the string to react violently. And therefore, it softens your blow on your guitar strings, which in turn lessens the amount of fret buzz. So... How hard should you strum your strings? How hard should you pick a string? Well, here is my little formula and something that I had to work on for a little bit to kind of start to figure out where exactly I need to, how much force I need to apply to the string. So let me go to a, a very gainy, dirty channel here. Using the, the fourth pick since we've started this video. <laughs> My quest, my never ending quest. I'll talk about, stay till the end and we'll talk about this. So now we have a little bit of distortion here. So now we have a little bit of gain. All right, so here's how I judge how hard I should be picking a string and getting myself into a habit of doing this all the time, even when I'm strumming. So when I'm playing legato, legato, if you're playing legato and it sounds like this. Then you're doing it absolutely wrong. And so therefore, we have to fix that problem. Well, how do we fix that problem? Best way to fix it right here. And this will work for your clean stuff too. This will give you an idea of how hard you're hitting the strings and how hard you should be hitting the strings. All right. So like I said, if you do this, you're already, you're already wrong and your legato is going to suck. The point of legato is for it to be very even and very fluid. That's what legato is. All your notes are kind of tied together. And just in a long series of never ending tones is what legato is. So the point of this is you can strike with your pick much harder than you can hammer onto this fretboard. So what you do is you keep lightening up your pick, your attack, your approach until everything you're hammering on sounds actually, you know, very fluid and very even. We don't want any anything sticking out. We don't want any one loud hit on the guitar anywhere. 
And once you get that down, and trust me, I have to be very cognizant of this myself. Sometimes I will catch myself picking way too hard and just beating on my guitar strings. And so I actually will probably, you know, when I'm before a show or whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll do this little warm up thing. And I will listen to see if there's anything jumping out irregularly. Now I do kind of a um, Paul Gilbert type of approach. I don't do it to where I just do this. I kind of pick, you know, like every third note or something like that. I've never counted it, to be honest with you. But that gives me an idea if I'm picking too hard because I want to pick as hard as I can play legato. And that sounds pretty good. And that has adjusted, because when I first started playing, I played very hard, I picked very hard. And that has adjusted how hard I pick and I play now. So now I have a very, a, a very, a much, much more various, very much more. I have a very much more lighter touch. And that is because I started paying attention to this hand as opposed to my legato. And it got this hand in check where it should be. So try that out. And if you hear this when you're doing your legato stuff, then you're playing, you're just picking way too damn hard. Before I continue on uh, with the next part, we're gonna talk about how hard you should press a string. Please subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and it really does help support this channel. And if you like the video, please share it because chances are you know somebody else that's beating their guitar like a redheaded stepchild. So please share it to them and let's, let's stop the abuse, okay? Let's just, let's stop the abuse. So if you want to further support the channel, you can jump over to my Patreon page. I finally went over to my Patreon page and actually did a little bit of work on it. And what you're going to get is you can join my Patreon page for a whopping $1 a month. You can support my Patreon page. And I've set my tiers to 1, 5, and 10, depending on what you want to get and how much you need. If you jump on my $10 tier, then once a month, uh, we will be able to contact you. You'll be able to contact me either via Skype or FaceTime or whatever have you. And we can do like private lessons or we can, you know, work on guitars, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, but that's going to be on my $10 tier. Um, and just anything you want to talk about on that, uh, we can get together and handle, handle all that. Plus on that tier, you'll get everything that comes before my tier. Um, I do have my discord set up, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Uh, just time, you know, time has just been a killer as of late trying to get things handled. But for the $1 tier, for the $1 tier, all my videos uh, will go up on my Patreon page one or two days before they hit YouTube, so you have early access to that. You have all the charts that I make and any backing tracks. For instance, the Comfortably Numb video that I am doing, um, all that is actually going to go up onto my Patreon page, and I'm going to have, I'm going to try to put the MIDI file up there. I think I can export this in MIDI, so you can just drag the MIDI file down and plug it into any type of DAW, and it'll start playing back. But I'm also going to put up, I'll put up a section with no drums and a section with no guitars, yada, yada. The whole thing is being done on my Yamaha Modi X. And uh, this is taking some time. This is a tremendous amount of work. So I'm still a few weeks away from that video. And then the solos are going to be done on my Ibanez. Probably going to use my J Custom for that one. And then, of course, I got to lay the vocal tracks. Um, I'm recreating Comfortably Numb with out an orchestra. <laughs> it's going to be pretty cool, but it's a tremendous amount of work. So if you want to help support the channel further, you can jump over to my Patreon page. Uh, everything is up and running now on it, and you can support it for a measly dollar a month. That is correct, one dollar. So moving on. All right, now we're going to talk about how hard you should press a guitar string. And like I said, I was watching my buddy play, and he was just, I mean, just his fingers were turning white. He plays, and he hammers so hard. I don't know how he doesn't break a string every song as hard as he picks the guitar because he's even using a medium pick and he's pounding the life out of that guitar. And like I said, um, he frets so hard, his fingers are turning white and I can see in his uh, fret wire all the indentions where he frets the guitar just so hard. So how hard should you hold a, should you press a string? Well, this is actually a pretty simple one. You should press a string that hard. Well, how hard is that? 
Well, this is how we gauge this. Put your finger on the string and keep pressing until it makes a sound. Now you're thinking, well, no shit, dude. <laughs> we know that. Well, a lot of people don't know that. They will fret and they just, they just grab it, man. They just get in there and they just, they just press. And they just hit everything hard. I can't even play like that. That's hard. Yeah, much easier when you do it lighter. Okay, so why do we need to press a string this light? Well, there's a couple of reasons why you need to press a string light. First off, you only want to apply enough pressure to sound off the string. For a multitude of reasons you want to do this. First off, if you're running nickel frets, it will save your frets by years of wear and tear. Years of wear and tear. Second off, if you have a bad habit of gripping and pressing really hard, as you become a more and more accomplished player, you're going to have a very hard time with not only your dexterity, but with your endurance. You're going to wear your hand out much, much, much faster. And as you become a better, better player and you start playing more and more solos and you start doing, you know, all this crap. When you start doing all that type of stuff, if you start pressing very hard on the strings, your hands are going to wear out extremely, extremely fast. And you're not going to get through these extended passages. So the goal is to tap as light, fret, tap, I will actually even pluck as light as you possibly can to give the sound a full bodied sound without killing the string and causing a tremendous amount of fret buzz, but also without wearing your hand down. If you do this lightly, I could sit here and probably do it all day because I'm hitting the string so light. I'm hitting the string so light that it's not really, I mean, my hand will get tired, of course, but it's not exhausting my hand. Now, if I increase the pressure on that, the difference is crazy. Now, if I start hitting this hard, I can already feel it in my left hand. And watch. Now, I'm hitting very hard. Now, I'm getting out of time because my left hand is now locking up because I'm hitting it way too hard. If I do this with a very light approach, and like I said, how hard do you hit a string? Well, you hit it hard enough to make it sound, and that's it. There's no reason to hit it harder than that because I'm already getting the sound that I want. That's how hard you press a string. <laughs> and like I said, I see people just kill, kill guitar strings. They just... I can't even play that way, man. Can't play hard like that. That's very hard to do. Anyway. Yeah, be gentle on your strings. Be nice on your strings. You only need to press your string just hard enough to make it sound. And that's it. Because if, if you press it harder, it's not going to make more sound. All it's going to do is wear out your frets and kill... My left hand is still locked up just from that little passage from hitting this very hard, just from that little bit of tapping I was doing there. So, don't beat the hell out of your guitar. Be gentle with your strings. They will last longer. They will not break nowhere near as often. Uh, it's easier on your frets. On a clean channel, it's much easier on our ears. It's definitely easier on your hands when you play lighter. Now, there are times where you do have to grab a string hard when you're doing big bends and stuff like that. That is understandable. But then go back to what you were doing. And the best way to gauge how hard you need to pick a string and how hard you need to hit, press a string is by doing, get some good distortion. 
and do uh, some little legato stuff. I'm barely hitting the strings. So only hard enough to make a sound because anything harder than that, well, you're still making the same sound and you're just wasting a lot of energy. All right, so that's going to wrap that part up right there uh, on how hard you should press a string and how damn hard you should pick, pluck, strum a string. So that is the only part of that we're going to move on. What I want to talk about quickly, going back to my great search for guitar picks. Um, I've had a couple people send me some stuff and ask, tell me, you know, hey, dude, I, I went to this pick, never looked back. Only pick I use, greatest pick in the world. Well, I don't know if it's the greatest picker in the world or not, because, you know, that's something I'm trying to determine. What is the greatest pick in the world? And not so much the greatest pick in the world. What is the greatest pick for me in the world? So if you have any suggestions on that, by all means, send them to me. Um, I don't care if they're wood, if they're acrylic, if they're nylon. Uh, I don't care if they're made out of dog shit. Um, if they work, I want to know about it. And so what I've done so far is, uh, let me show you here. These are the picks I've collected so far. So I've got this little, these are all different picks. And there's probably, I don't know, 15 of them here. And like I said, I'm trying to figure out what my best pick is. Now this is my gold standard. This is the blue chip. Um, this is literally the greatest pick I've ever played in my life. I absolutely love this pick. The problem is the pick is insanely expensive. These are 40 bucks now. Uh, and like I said, you know, you lose... You go to a show, you drop three of these and lose them, you know, you're in the hole $120 already before you even get out of the show because of the pick. Now, this is my gold standard. Uh, this is literally the greatest pick, and I've played with thousands of picks over the years. This is the best pick I've ever played with. I've been playing with this pick for four years now, five years now, and as you can see, there's literally no wear. Uh, it doesn't quite have as much attack, attack, a little bit more of a rounded tip than a, a Jazz 3, not quite as sharp. But it's like the pick is oiled, and it literally just rolls off of the strings. I love, absolutely love this pick, but they're insanely expensive. So I've been moving through, and like I said, it's kind of hard to find picks where I live. Um, anytime I go past anything musical, I stop in. So I've been jamming. So I've been jamming on these, um, what are these damn things? These V-picks. So I bought some V-picks. So I've been playing on those, um, trying to find the ultimate pick. And when I get all this done and I have all these picks, and I don't even want to know how much money I'm going to spend on picks, but I'm going to do this like ultimate pick shootout. I mean, it could be a month, two months away. But if you have any suggestions on picks to use, picks that you absolutely love, and don't say like a Jazz 3. I mean, I've got, I've literally got 50 Jazz 3s. Um, but if you have something that's off kilter, you know, something that's not everybody in the world is playing, then uh, drop me a line and let me know so I can see if I can locate one here because I'm just going to keep collecting picks until I come up with what I consider the ultimate guitar pick. So on that note, we're going to wrap it up right there. Um, you know, check out the video. I hope you liked the video. It's on how hard you should strum, how hard you should press the guitar string without killing yourself. And hopefully it'll help you out because it helped me out. Once I was cognizant of what I was doing, it really did help my, especially my legato playing, it helped my legato playing out tremendously, which caused me to strum and pick lighter. And ultimately it caused me to do this a lot lighter and my hand will last longer for a show. And that is important. So on that note, we are going to wrap it up right there. Please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support a little further, you can join my Patreon for a mere $1 a month. You can jump on my Patreon page. And like the great Sammy Hagar says, if you miss the beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And no matter what you do, for the love of God, rock on.